Hi, I'm Chef AJ and welcome to Healthy Living. You know, healthy living starts with healthy eating, so I'm going to show you some healthy and delicious recipes that will help you to look and feel your best. Today, I'm going to show you my healthy twist on classic diner food. We're going to be making everybody's favorites, chili, burgers, and shakes. We'll be making a hearty mushroom chili, some delicious chipotle bean burgers, and a rich, thick, creamy chocolate shake with a secret healthy ingredient. So please join me in the kitchen and let's get cooking. So the first recipe I'm going to make today, one of my favorites, is mushroom chili. It was adapted from a recipe by my friend Jocelyn Grave, who wrote the book, The Low-Fat Herbivore. I love to take recipes that I love and translate them into the pressure cooker. I love my Instant Pot because it's so easy to just throw everything in, push a button, walk away, you set it, forget it, and you have healthy meals in minutes. To make the mushroom chili, I'm starting with, of course, mushrooms. Two pounds of sliced mushrooms. Mushrooms are best eaten cooked rather than raw. I have the equivalent of two cans. Each can is 14.5 ounces of fire roasted salt free tomatoes. If you didn't want to use cans, and by the way, I make sure that all the cans I use are BPA free, you can buy tomatoes now in jars or in aseptic cartons, or you could use fresh tomatoes. One large chopped red onion. Onion goes, garlic follows, eight cloves of minced garlic. For me, you can never have too much garlic. And my beans. I'm using pinto beans, black beans, kidney beans. One and a half cups of each. Interestingly enough, each can of canned beans has exactly 1.5 cups. So if you didn't want to cook the beans from scratch, which you could do in minutes with your Instant Pot, you can buy them canned. But make sure if they have salt, you rinse them. If you are using canned beans, you don't have to add any liquid to this recipe. If you're using beans cooked from scratch, you'll need about another one and a half cups of water. So here's my pinto beans, my black beans. I like using different beans just because I think they're pretty, but you could certainly use all one kind if you wanted, a total of 4.5 cups. And now my spices. Crushed red pepper flakes, dry mustard powder, a teaspoon of each of those. You can always add more heat or less if you like. Half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of thyme. That's it, you don't even have to stir. You put the top on, and this is a very quick cooking recipe, six minutes. The only other ingredient that goes in this delicious mushroom chili is corn. I have a pound of organic frozen corn, which I've defrosted. The only reason I'm not putting it in right now is because there's no more room in the pressure cooker. But mushrooms are mostly water, as are most fruits and vegetables. And when this cooks down, there'll be plenty of room to stir in the corn. It's been cooked already, but certainly you could use fresh corn if you like. I love doing recipes in the Instant Pot because it gives me time to talk to you about why I eat this way and why I think you should consider eating more whole food plant-based recipes. For 26 years, I was a vegan for ethical reasons, but I followed a vegetarian diet. I didn't eat any fruits and vegetables. I ate candies, cookies, cakes, pies, and ice cream, flour, sugar, oil, salt, no real food like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. I not only became obese, almost 200 pounds eating this way, but I developed the beginning of colon cancer. When I switched my diet from a junk food vegan diet, which included things like Coke Slurpees for breakfast, and Dr. Pepper for lunch, those were my two favorite beverages, never drank any water, I actually reversed my disease. So these bleeding polyps that I had riddled throughout my colon actually disappeared. And the doctor didn't even believe it. He asked me, what did I do to get rid of him? He thought I actually had surgery. I said, I just changed my diet. Processed food is calorie rich and nutrient poor. I know a lot of you are thinking, well, olive oil is healthy. There's a lot of TV shows and the doctors are saying it's heart healthy. But olive oil is a highly processed food not found in nature and our ancestors didn't eat it. There's olives in nature, but there's no oil in nature. 
Olives are about 600 calories a pound. They're a whole natural food. They contain water and fiber and vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants and micronutrients. But when you take olives and process them into an oil, which I don't think any of you can really do in your home, that's another test, by the way, is if you can not make it easily and effortlessly in your kitchen, you may be want to think about not eating it or minimize how much you eat it. But you take olives, which are about 600 calories a pound, process it into olive oil. Now, everything that was good about the whole natural food, the fiber and the water and the vitamins and minerals, are thrown away in the sludge. And you're left with this non-nutritive liquid, the sludge, which is now 4,000 calories a pound. No vitamins, no minerals, no antioxidants. So you take a whole natural food that was 600 calories a pound, and you process it into a what I feel is a non-food or a food-like substance that's 4,000 calories a pound that's atherogenic, obesogenic, and diabetogenic, meaning contributes to atherosclerosis, obesity, and diabetes. All oil is 120 calories a tablespoon. And for that many calories, I can eat a whole pound of vegetables. Let's talk about sugar for a second, because I was a sugar addict for about 43 years, and it pretty much destroyed my health. There really is no sugar found in nature. Sure, you could say there's maple trees, and they yield maple syrup, but it takes somebody who really knows how to tap a maple tree and get 40 gallons of sap and boil it down to one gallon of maple syrup. How many of you can really make maple syrup, or agave, or brown rice syrup, or barley malt? Sugar is sugar, oil is oil, salt is salt, in my opinion, it's all bad. And that's why I don't eat it and I don't use it in recipes and I certainly don't serve it to my friends or family and people I love. There's no sugar found in nature, not in the way that we eat it today. Americans eat over 150 pounds of sugar per person per year. I haven't eaten any sugar since July 6, 2003. So somebody out there is eating my share. Is it you? Is it you? See guys, there's no sugar in nature. It comes from fruit. The sweetness is from fruit. And that's why I use the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. We're meant to satisfy our sweet tooth without using sugar, using the whole natural fruit. Think about it this way. If you took a three foot piece of sugar cane, which is found in nature, and processed it into processed sugar, do you know how much sugar you'd get? One teaspoon. Nobody could eat that much sugar cane. You could eat beets, but the sugar that the beets are made from are now missing the fiber and the water and the nutrients. So I really want you to understand this concept of what happens when you process a food. You get rid of all the beneficial compounds, the fiber, the water, the nutrients. You make it calorie rich and nutrient poor. You know, it takes 16 ears of corn to make one tablespoon of corn oil. I don't know very many people that could eat 16 ears of corn. I tried once and after about two and a half, I got full, but nobody thinks anything about glug, 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 pouring all that oil on their salad. So the idea is, is we're not only designed to eat whole food, but we're designed to eat it whole, like our ancestors did throughout most of human history. The fact that you love sugar, fat, and salt means that your brain is functioning normally. I love sugar, fat, and salt too. But we want to get our sugar, fat, and salt in its whole food form the way it's found in nature, not by processed food. The processed food companies have hijacked our taste buds for too long. Let's get back to eating real food, whole food, from a plant, not manufactured in a plant. And cook it yourself in your Instant Pot or any other way you want, and hopefully with your family too, and get the kids involved. I bet you'll feel better, and you'll look better too. We'll be right back, and I'm gonna show you how to make the best burgers in town. Meat-free, cholesterol-free, you won't miss the meat, and I promise you'll love them, and so will your friends and family. Hi, I'm Chef AJ, the host of Healthy Living. You know, as a professional chef, I have just about every kitchen appliance known to man. But my all-time favorite, the one that I absolutely could not live without, is the Instant Pot Electric Pressure Cooker. One of the things that I particularly love about the Instant Pot Electric Pressure Cooker is that it comes with a stainless steel insert. Many other electric pressure cookers come with non-stick inserts, so if you want to avoid the dangers associated with non-stick lining, the Instant Pot is the way to go. The Instant Pot not only saves me time, but it saves me money. Because instead of eating out at restaurants or eating processed food, I'm cooking whole foods like whole grains and legumes in no time. Things that take a really long time to cook on the stove, like beans that could take two and a half hours, can take as little as 10 minutes in the Instant Pot electric pressure cooker. Steel cut oats, for example, which take about an hour to cook on the stove, take only five minutes in the Instant Pot electric pressure cooker. And you can make delicious soups, stews, and chilies in less than 10 minutes. 
and many of these recipes are available free on my website, eatunprocessed.com. When I get home from work late, the last thing I want to do is cook, but with the Instant Pot, all I have to do is throw everything in, press a button, and walk away. I use that time to take a bubble bath, take my dog for a walk, who wants to slave over a hot stove? With the push of a button, you can have healthy, delicious meals in no time. I know what a lot of you are thinking, the last thing I need is another appliance to sit on my counter. But first of all, this is not just another appliance, because this will replace at least four appliances that you might already have. In addition to being the world's finest electric pressure cooker, it's also a slow cooker. That's one tool already you can get rid of. It's also a rice cooker, so you no longer need your rice cooker, and it even makes yogurt. You can even bake a cake in the Instant Pot. I always joke with my husband that if there was a fire, I would grab my dog Sparky under one arm and my Instant Pot on the other arm. That's how much I love my Instant Pot. You know, ever since my book on process came out four years ago, I've been on the road 50 weeks a year. And I can honestly tell you that I travel with my Instant Pot electric pressure cooker so that I can cook healthy things like potatoes and greens in my hotel room. Instant Pot has agreed to offer a discount to all the viewers of Healthy Living. Simply go to their website, www.instantpot.com, and put in the code MYNAMEAJ for $50 off your Instant Pot. I know that you will love it as much as I do. While we're waiting for the mushroom chili to finish cooking, I'd like to show you my favorite burger recipe. It's a chipotle bean burger. I adapted this recipe from a recipe I saw on the Whole Foods website. We're starting off, because after all it is a bean burger, with beans. And what I have here are three cups of beans. Half the beans I put in the food processor and pureed them like you would if you made hummus. So half the beans were smashed and half the beans I left whole. And again, three cups of beans is the equivalent of two cans of beans if you prefer to use canned beans. But once you get the Instant Pot, you'll be able to cook all the beans you want from scratch quite easily. I have two cups of rice. You could use any rice. I'm using this Bhutanese red rice just because it's delicious and I just love it. And by the way, this rice took only 10 minutes to cook in the Instant Pot. So if you get an Instant Pot, it replaces so many other appliances like your slow cooker and your rice cooker and your yogurt maker. Two cups of mashed sweet potatoes. What's interesting is you could eat every ingredient that's a component of this recipe. And that's part of the reason it's so delicious. Cilantro, chopped, and again, don't write to me and tell me if you hate cilantro. I mean, it's okay. Use parsley. That's fine. Italian parsley, even better. Nutritional yeast, which gives it a nutty, cheesy flavor. Nutritional yeast is very high in B vitamins. Salt-free chili powder. Make sure you check because there's salt in a lot of chili powders. Roasted cumin. If you can't find roasted, you can just use regular cumin. One of my all-time favorite spices, smoked paprika, and the smoking does make a difference, and so does the roasting in spices. And for a little heat, chipotle powder. If it's too hot, you can always omit it, but then of course you wouldn't want to call it a chipotle bean burger if you didn't put chipotle in. On the stove, I've already sauteed my fresh vegetables. Tomatoes, bell pepper, carrots, and onion. People wonder, well, how do you saute if you don't use oil? Well, you just do. You get a good pan. I'm using a stainless steel pan here. You know, vegetables are primarily water anyway, so they release water, but what you can do is a technique called water saute, where you put just a little bit of water, one or two tablespoons at a time, and I can still get a nice brown caramelization on my onions and my garlic, which is also in here doing that. You can also saute in things like low sodium or no sodium vegetable broth. If you're doing something like a teriyaki stir fry, you can saute in orange juice or pineapple juice, preferably unsweetened. So you really don't need oil to saute. You don't even need it to bake. As I mentioned, I was a pastry chef. I never used oil. And when you stop using oil, not only do you lose weight and gain health, but you save so much money. I'm a consultant to several restaurants in Los Angeles, and I train them to take oil, sugar, salt out of their dishes. And at first, the chefs are really resistant because in culinary school, that's all you learn are unique ways to concentrate the sugar, fat, and salt in foods, just like they do in the processed food industry. But once they learn how good food can taste, actually even better without oil, they thank me because their customers haven't even noticed, and they're saving money. When you eat oil, it coats the taste buds of your tongue, so you can't taste the food. And guess what happens then? You need a lot more salt. So I've let this cool a little bit. My saute of carrots, onion, garlic, bell pepper, and tomato. 
And I really like to use gloves because I don't know who's going to be eating this and if they want my fingers all over. I'm always petting my dog Sparky, so just to be hygienic, I use non-latex food service gloves. And I can really get in and put lots of love into my food. You know what they say, no glove, no love, right? <laughs> anyway, so you just mash it all together in this beautiful mixture. You know, I've been following a plant-based diet for almost 40 years, so hardly anybody in my family and very few of my friends actually eat this way. But that doesn't mean they don't eat my food. They love my food because if food tastes delicious, people will eat it in spite of the fact that it's healthy. But I wouldn't tell them necessarily until you're sure they absolutely love it. You know, I don't go around telling people, oh, my food is whole food plant-based without sugar, oil, or salt. I just let it speak for itself. You know, what's really hard, believe it or not, for most people isn't the oil and isn't the sugar because those can easily be replaced in cooking and baking. What seems to be hardest for most people is the salt. The more you eat salt, the more you crave it. Salt is actually a trigger food for a lot of people and it stimulates overeating. So if you're trying to lose weight, one of the best things you could do is stop eating salt. And if you've been eating a high salt diet and if you're eating processed food, by definition, you are eating a high salt diet because most Americans eat between 67% and 92% of their calories from processed food. It could take a while for your taste buds to adjust. But if you wait 30 days and stop eating so much salt, assaulting your taste buds with salt, at the end of 30 days, a process called neurological adaptation or neuroadaptation occurs. So what that means is this. Have you ever gone to a movie theater and you got there late and it was dark when you got inside the theater so you couldn't easily find your seat? Well, if you just stand still for a minute, your eyes will adjust to the new level of darkness and you can find your seat. Well, the same thing happens with your taste buds. If you're eating a lot of sugar, fat, and salt, at first, whole natural food without these chemicals don't taste as good. But after a while, 30 days, longer for some people, it's like your taste buds wake up and rejuvenate and you can actually taste the salt in celery. You can taste the fat in oats. You can taste the sweetness of fruit. Fruit starts tasting amazing, but it takes a little while. To give you another example, if you grew up drinking whole milk as we did when I was a young child in Chicago, one day my parents heard something on the news that it wasn't healthy and we switched to non-fat milk. Well, at first we said, this is disgusting. It tastes like water. But after a while, we got used to the non-fat milk, and if we went to a friend or relative's house that served whole milk, we said, this is disgusting, it tastes like paint. So taste can change, and the best way for them to change is to continually eating the healthy food, increasing your consumption of fruits and vegetables. Remember, Americans eat less than 7% of their calories from vegetables, and 92% from animal products and processed food. Here on Healthy Living with Chef AJ, 100% of the calories come from whole food. So try including some of these recipes every day in your repertoire. After you make the mixture, ideally you'd want to chill it for a few hours so it can set up. But if you don't have time, that's okay. I probably shouldn't have taken my gloves off so soon, but that's okay. My hands are clean. If you have a burger press, you can use it. You can also just take a half cup measure. I know how to eyeball these, and I'm going to make these really cute burgers. Now, you can make them as big as you want or as little as you want. My friend Shada, she likes to make sliders. You could even make meatballs. But what I do suggest is that you try to make them the same size so that they will cook evenly. Now, here I'm using parchment paper so that it won't stick. But what I really recommend is you invest in something called a silicone baking mat. I've had the same one for almost 20 years now, and it's still great. I do that out of respect to the environment, because while parchment paper is great, I have to use a new piece each time. But with a silicone baking mat, I can use the same one over and over. And they come in all sizes to fit all different shaped pans. Aren't these pretty? I love these. We have these every week. You know, on Thursday night, I do my podcast, Healthy Living with Chef AJ, where I interview all kinds of experts, not only in the plant-based world, but in the world in general. And so I'm recording until 7 o'clock at night, and I got to get dinner on the table for my husband. And so these freeze beautifully. I don't really like freezing food all that much. I think it loses a little bit of something when you freeze it. But for some reason, this recipe, even when you freeze it, tastes amazing. And this is our Thursday night dinner. I have to be gluten-free by necessity, and so I don't eat any bread. So the way we serve this is wraps. We get 
big leaves of butter lettuce and all kinds of different condiments of mustard and barbecue sauce and ketchup and I actually do make my own because you know I don't use sugar and you can't really find condiments without sugar there is one brand of mustard though I can find without salt and then I make sliced red onion and I do sliced tomatoes for my husband there's some pickles and we just have a veritable feast of make your own burger and I do this when I have company as well and these are delicious the next day, not even cold, but just reheated. So I think you're gonna really like this recipe. It would have been better if I had kept my gloves on because guess what? I'm gonna have to wash my hands now and I'm not going to lick my fingers, I promise, even though it would probably taste really good. And I love heat. You know, I grew up in Los Angeles where Mexican food is on the menu just about every day in my house. And so I love the heat from the Chipotle. But if you're a person that doesn't like heat, you can omit it. You can use less. But I think it really gives it a lot of flavor. And especially, remember, I'm not using salt. That doesn't mean I'm not using flavor. I use all kinds of herbs and spices, onion, garlic. And I love using things like jalapeno and Chipotle to give it that smokiness and extra heat gonna pop these in the oven, wash my hands, and when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious, nutrient-rich chocolate milkshake without any dairy or any sugar, and I promise you're gonna love it, and your kids will too. It was a healthy snack. I released the pressure, and I'm gonna show you how to finish the mushroom chili. I love the song the Instant Pot plays for me every time I open it. So I've got my one pound of organic frozen corn, which I defrosted. And I'm just going to stir it in. I love to eat this over rice. Love brown basmati rice, Bhutanese red rice, forbidden black rice, any kind of rice. I also love to eat this over a baked Yukon gold potato, sprinkled with some faux parmesan and a few chopped scallions. This is hearty, flavorful, and delicious. And it improves with age, like me. All right. Now, I wanna show you how to make a delicious, thick, rich, creamy chocolate milkshake without milk and without sugar. But first, I wanna teach you how to make milk. I think if we were only going to take one step in the direction for optimum health, the first thing I would suggest is to stop consuming dairy products. Yes, milk, cheese, yogurt, ice cream, because there's so many ways to make them healthy and delicious without using dairy. I'm gonna show you how to make your own almond milk. In the blender, I have three cups of water, and how much water you use is up to you. If you want it really thick and rich, you use less water, as little as a cup. If you want it less rich and thick, you can use four or five cups, but I'm using the average, which is three cups. In this little packet, I have two tablespoons of raw almond butter. I love the packet because I'm a food addict in recovery and having delicious things like nuts and nut butters in my house is very difficult for me. But if I have these portion controlled serving sizes using to make almond milk, it's not a problem. So I have my two tablespoons of raw almond butter and you can certainly do this with raw nuts. You will have to soak them in advance first. And I find that it actually is easier and cheaper to just do it from the nut butter. Turn the Vitamix on. <laughs> and in 10 seconds or less, you have almond milk. Now this will be unsweetened almond milk, but if you wanted it sweet, why not use nature's candy? What I use in all my sweet recipes, whole dates, make sure you take the pit off. This made three cups of almond milk. This will last in a glass jar in your refrigerator three to five days. It will separate, so you might want to shake it up. But for this recipe, I need only one cup. So I'm just gonna take two cups away. What I love about the Vitamix is it tells you how much is in the machine. There we go. And you know, it's so much less expensive when you make it yourself. If for some reason you didn't like almonds or were allergic to them, you could do this with hemp seeds, very high in omega-3 fatty acids. You could do this with walnuts. You could do this with pecans. When I became plant-based in 1977, they didn't even have powdered soy milk available at the stores. But you can go into any store anywhere in the United States and find almond milk, quinoa milk, oat milk, rice milk, and you can make them all yourselves. To make rice milk, you just take a half a cup of uncooked brown rice with two or three cups of water. To make oat milk, you just take oats. So anything can become milk. But what I love about making it with the almond butter is you don't have to strain it and it's very smooth. Got my one cup of almond milk in the blender, homemade, and I love making it myself because there's no packaging. And I'm gonna add four ounces of unsweetened pomegranate juice. I just happen to like the flavor, but if you wanted to do all almond milk, that would be fine. 
this is my secret ingredient. So if you have a husband or a child that has an aversion to eating vegetables, especially green vegetables, just don't let them see you make this. Don't tell them that there's almost a half a pound of spinach in their milkshake. Spinach is a very neutral tasting vegetable, unlike kale. They're not gonna even know, so don't let them see you make it. So what you wanna do is you wanna stuff in as much spinach as you can. This is almost eight ounces. Six ounces would be fine, depending on where you live. If you buy it in bags, organic spinach could be anywhere from four ounces to eight ounces. So you wanna eat as many greens as you can every day. Try to incorporate them in as many meals as you can. Next. For sweetness, we're going to add a few pitted dates. Always make sure they're pitted because your blender will thank you. Three tablespoons of cocoa powder. If for some reason you can't have chocolate, you can always use carob powder. Next, I want to add my frozen fruit. I have a banana which I froze in advance. Make sure that when you freeze your bananas, you freeze them with the peel off and ripe because they won't taste sweet otherwise and then two cups of frozen blueberries. And look at this blender, all full of antioxidants, phytochemicals, all the things you need to not only prevent the common diseases associated with the standard American diet, like heart disease, and type two diabetes, and autoimmune disease, but actually reverse them. Important that you always have the top on before you turn the Vitamix on. always like to serve it in a pretty glass. Remember, people eat with their eyes, so visual presentation is important for food in general. But look at this. Doesn't this look like the most rich, delicious, chocolatey shake you have ever seen in your life? You know, a typical milkshake could have over a thousand calories. This has probably a few hundred. If you have raw cacao nibs, you can sprinkle it. I always like to put a straw in and then drink up to your health. Make sure you come right back because I'm going to plate everything up and we're going to taste our healthy diner feast. So here's my healthy twist on classic diner food. Mushroom chili with a faux parmesan sprinkle, chipotle bean burgers, and a rich, thick, creamy chocolate shake. Everything is dairy-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, and cholesterol-free, and downright delicious. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy taste delicious. Love and kale. Mmm. Not milk. <laughs>